Hey guys, meteorologist Chris Tomer here. Let's talk some mountain weather, and it is snowing right now. This is the day for Teton snow. It is snowing. There's a Grand Targhee snow coming down. Mid-mountain and higher is where obviously we're going to get most of this accumulation. Um, snowing up at Big Sky as well, very lightly there. And back to Jackson Hole, it's been snowing mid-mountain and higher up there. So this is the day. The next 48 hours, 24 to 48 hours, I'm expecting probably 6 to 10 inches of snow mid-mountain and higher across the Teton range. All right, let me take you back to my um, my headlines here. So I'll break it down. Teton snow next 24 to 48 hours. Wasatch snow comes in 11-7. Colorado gets snow on 11-9. So there's a couple of different storm systems here and a couple of different cold fronts involved in all of this. Let me take you back and show you what this is going to look like. Um, so this is the uh, the current water vapor. So your oranges and reds re on the, this represent drier air aloft, where the whites and the blues represent your moisture aloft. Let me just show you where. So we've got a storm spinning up here. And there's another one behind it. And there's probably another one back here. But this is all a pretty rich feed, as you can see reaching way back into the Pacific and then just firing all that moisture in with these areas of low pressure. So that's the pattern that is going to dictate most likely through about the 11th, maybe 12th, but it starts to shift after that and I'll show you the jet stream pattern coming up. Let me show you what this looks like. Future radar satellite. There's your little bit of snow up there in the Tetons. Well, it's actually a fair amount. And then that continues through the 6th in the morning. Here comes the next area of low pressure hitting the Pacific Northwest. Still snowing in the Tetons. Like I said, it's about a 24 to 48 hour snow. So probably 6 to 10 inches up in that area. Still snowing there early morning on the 7th. The 7th is when the Wasatch gets its snow. You can see the blue. Um, and this is more of a, a brush. Brushing the, uh, the Wasatch. This is not a, a perfect direct hit. The aura graphics are not perfect. So the amounts they are not going to be huge. But uh, that'll move through, and then watch what happens. Here we are uh, on the 8th. Everything starts to transition down towards Colorado in the form of a cold front. Watch it start to blow up. In Colorado, the snow expands. Looks like we'll get a rain-snow mix across Denver and the front range changing over to snow. But it's all snow for the mountains, especially right on top of the Continental Divide, tilting east. So and some of this will probably spill over into Summit County as well in Vail, but right on that divide. And then the cold front blows to the south, still there at 4 p.m. at 11.9, and then it's gone. Another storm moves into the, uh, the west coast. But that's the way it shakes out on the future radar and satellite. Let me show you how the jet stream uh, plays out on this. So this is the jet on 11.8. So this is just after the snow has moved through the Wasatch. You can see the dip in the jet moving through Utah. And then all of that energy with the cold front will move into Colorado, and it'll snow. Let me take you a little further down the road. This is 1113. Different pattern. Uh, most of the active weather is going to be up in the, uh, the Pacific Northwest in BC, but notice the difference. Look at the subtropical jet. It's starting to be a player. It's starting to become a player. You can see it down there just off the Baja of California. Let me take you back to 118. Notice and then watch the change. That southern, that southern branch starts to become a little more active. So that'll be something to watch down the road because that's what I expect to be a huge player by the time we get into December, January, February, March, that southern branch. All right, numbers. Here are the numbers um, from today through the 9th. So this captures the evolution of the Tetons, the Wasatch, and Colorado. Again, probably 6 to 10 up there in the Tetons. Um, again, more of a a, a brush or a glancing blow for the Wasatch. Now the numbers could go up, but I'm thinking maybe four or five inches for Alta Snowbird. We'll see. We'll see. And in Colorado, uh, looking like, uh, again, right on top of the continental divide in the east, we're probably going to look for about six to ten for a lot of those areas. Maybe a bit more up around Longs and Eldora. Um, and then less as you go towards the western slope. Probably two to six out there. Maybe two to eight. Um, and that's probably going to do it for that time period. Here is time period number two. The pattern shifts back towards the Pacific Northwest and BC. Like I was saying, that's where the big numbers are going to be. One to two feet up there from Baker to Whistler and right along that coastal range up there in BC. And some of that will drop down towards California. So we may be able to crank out some for Shasta and Tahoe. And then we'll have to wait and see what happens after this period if that subtropical jet becomes more of a player 
Um, we'll just have to see. But guys, thanks for tuning in here on this Sunday. Always appreciate it. Take care.